bothered me anyway. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 23 animated movies of each year. I. I love you. Really? Really, really. For this list, we'll be looking back over the 21st century so far and selecting the best animated movies from every year. And in case you're wondering why certain great films aren't mentioned, we're not including anime on this list. Did we get it right? Are there any glaring omissions? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. 2000 – The Emperor's New Groove Some movies take an easy and smooth path from conception through production. The Emperor's New Groove was not one of those movies. Originally called Kingdom of the Sun, the film was going to be a big musical epic. However, creative differences among people involved, unimpressed test audiences, and the entire thing falling farther and farther behind schedule led to the slapstick final product we all know and love. Okay, see this palace? Everyone in it is at my command. Check this out. Butler? Chef? Theme song guy. Oh yeah! Even though it wasn't a huge box office hit, the film became 2001's best-selling DVD and has gained recognition as one of Disney's best of the 2000s. This year also saw the release of Aardman Animation's first-ever feature-length movie, Chicken Run, which remains the highest-grossing stop-motion animated movie ever. <laughs> and... <laughs> Laser go! So, is it as good as you imagined? No. <gasps> it's better. 2001. Shrek. While it was great to see Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius among the first ever nominees for the Best Animated Feature Oscar, the battle was between Shrek and Monsters, Inc. Yeah. Goodbye, Boo. Kitty. Kitty has to go. You didn't have to be a genius to recognize those two films that stood above the crowd that year. And as much as we love Monsters, Inc., we're with the Academy on this one, because Shrek rocked. The film was filled with great voice performances, and it had a brilliant script that honored and parodied so many of the classic fairy tale tropes we grew up with. But I, I don't understand. I'm supposed to be beautiful. But you are beautiful. In fact, the script was nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay at the Oscars and BAFTAs, taking home the statue for the latter. 2002 – Lilo and Stitch The 1990s was a magical time for Walt Disney Animation. Often referred to as the Renaissance era, the company released hit after hit during the decade, starting with The Little Mermaid in 1989 and ending with Tarzan ten years later. Come to me now to see my world The 2000s, however, weren't as memorable for the company, with a few exceptions, one of them being 2002's Lilo and Stitch. This charming tale of a little girl and her genetically engineered koala-looking pet was a hit with fans and critics, and even earned Disney Animation one of its few Oscar nominations of the decade as well, their acquisition of Pixar in 2006 notwithstanding. Ohana means family. Family means nobody. nobody gets left behind or forgotten. 2003 – Finding Nemo These days, it's almost expected that Disney or Pixar will win the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature, or at least it's a shock to some when they don't. However, it wasn't until the third year of the award in 2003 that either studio won said prize, and that was Pixar with their mega-hit Finding Nemo. This is gonna be good, I can tell. And my son, Nemo, See, he was mad at me. And maybe he wouldn't have done it if I hadn't been so tough on him. I don't know. The film touched our hearts and our funny bones with its relatable themes of love and loss and a father's desperate search for his son. Along with all the critical acclaim, the film grossed over $870 million in its initial run in theaters, making it the highest grossing animated movie for a little while. Uh, Dad, you can let go now. Sorry. Now go have an adventure! 2004 – The Incredibles We can't talk about 2004 without talking about the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, and not just because SpongeBob and Patrick ride on David Hasselhoff's back. So where's your boat? Boat? 
Although that would have been enough, the rest of the movie is great also, making it a win-win in our books. In another win, 2004 also gave us The Incredibles, a film that we'd put up against any superhero movie before and since. Along with a screenplay nomination, The Incredibles won the Best Animated Feature Oscar and became the first fully animated film to win the Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation which, in the world of sci-fi and fantasy, is a big deal. If we work together, you won't have to be. I don't know what will happen. Hey, we're superheroes. What could happen? 2005, Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Following the success of his Wallace and Gromit short films, Nick Park brought the duo to the feature realm with The Curse of the Were-Rabbit. The film is a supernatural monster horror parody done in the stop-motion style that has become synonymous with Park's most beloved characters. Jeez! <laughs> it's me again! I'm back! Gromit, you clever mutt! Well done, old pal! <laughs> it's a great film with heart and laughs and a place in Oscar history as the first stop-motion movie to take home the award for Best Animated Feature. 2005 was also the year Madagascar premiered. That movie was a big, fun hit, spawning multiple sequels and becoming one of the highest-grossing animated franchises of all time. I'm loving San Diego. This place is off the chisling. 27. Woman physically fit, physically fit, physically, physically, physically fit. Woman physically fit. 2006, Happy Feet. Pinguino más cool, latino por supuesto, 100% por ciento español. My brother, ¿qué? Loco me llaman, una señorita me entiende como flama la fiesta. Baila, baila, muchachita. Mi corazón tiene dinamita. Boom. Great music, Robin Williams, and a tap dancing penguin. What's not to love about Happy Feet? The film also has a great message about following your passion, staying true to who you are, and gaining acceptance for it. There's also a strong environmental message that we definitely appreciate. The film took home the Oscar for Best Animated Feature that year, but we couldn't leave 2006 without giving a nod to the fellow nominee, Cars. And while Fleshed Away was considered a flop at the box office, we've always enjoyed the story of the pampered mouse on the mean streets of Rattropolis. I was wondering if you do build a Jammy Dodger Mark II, you, um, you wouldn't happen to need a first mate, would you? 2007, Persepolis. In 2007, a culinary rat took the animated world by storm. Yep, this is the year of Ratatouille and Remy, the rat who wanted more out of life and who ended up winning the hearts, minds, and stomachs of even the harshest critics. Can I interest you in a dessert this evening? Don't you always. Which one would you like? Surprise me! But while Remy was cooking up a great movie, Marjan Satrapi and Vincent Parano were drawing up a beautiful black and white film coming of age story set during the years of the Iranian Revolution. A story that, while specific and personal for Satrapi, also speaks to the universality of humanity's oppressions and struggles. I just don't understand why, as a woman, you don't think I'd be affected by the sight of men in skin-tight pants, yet you're worried they'll get turned on by a few less inches of veil? Persepolis made its debut at the Cannes Film Festival that year and was the co-winner of the festival's jury prize. 2008, WALL-E. Waltz with Bashir just missed topping our list for 2008. In many other years, this powerful Israeli film about memory and war would have been number one. However, this year it came up against WALL-E, a film that Time Magazine called the best movie of the decade. A movie whose conception began with this question by director Andrew Stanton. What if mankind had to leave Earth and somebody forgot to turn off the last robot? And that is all that love's about. With that as the launching point, Wally explores humanity's relationship to technology, the planet, and ourselves. And it isn't always pretty. We'd also like to give a shout out to Kung Fu Panda with its great animation, funny story, and Jack Black. 2009, Coraline. We have to start by saying that 2009 was probably the hardest year on this list to pick a top movie. There was just so much phenomenal stuff to choose from, starting with Up, the second animated film in history to be nominated for a Best Picture Oscar. 
I would like to award you the highest honor I can bestow. The Ellie Badge. Wow. There was also Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs and Wes Anderson's brilliant stop-motion Fantastic Mr. Fox. But in the end, it was a girl and her doll that stood above them all. Based on a Neil Gaiman novella, Coraline is a movie that Roger Ebert wonderfully described as, quote, a beautiful film about several nasty people. You mean like hide and seek? Perfect! <gasps> hide and seek? In the rain. What rain? Huh. 2010, Toy Story 3. So long. Picking a favorite Toy Story movie is almost impossible to do. We can safely say, though, that Toy Story 3 was the best animated movie released in 2010. And not just because the incinerator scene makes us cry every time we watch it. But while the third installment of Woody, Buzz, and the Gang tops our list, there were a couple of other movies from 2010 that deserve a mention. Tangled used a new artistic style to tell the story of Rapunzel, and How to Train Your Dragon was the first film in what would become one of the 15 highest-grossing animated series of all time. While other places have ponies or parrots, we have dragons. 2011, Rango. Normally, doing voice acting on an animated movie involves being alone in a booth and saying your lines into a microphone. Well, that's not how it worked on Rango. And remember, within all of us resides the true spirit of the what? <laughs> Let's take it from the top. We guess if there was going to be a movie that did it differently, it would be a Western comedy about a lost chameleon directed by the guy who made the first three Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Gore Verbinski took the actors out of those little sound booths and put them all on stage together, allowing them to move and interact and perform. And it's just going to help the animation so much more. It's just going to inform the character a lot better. Help! Instead of motion capture, it's kind of emotion capture. Oh, evening, Gordy. The animators would then use those performances to inform their drawings, and it worked. The movie would go on to gross over $245 million and win a Best Animated Feature Oscar. 2012, Wreck-It Ralph. Rise of the Guardians was a highly anticipated film based on the popular The Guardians of Childhood book series. Brave is a great film, the first Pixar movie with a female hero, and it was the Academy's pick for Best Animated Feature of the Year. Destiny is not our own, but I know better. <laughs> Our fate lives within us. You only have to be brave enough to see it. But with both those films in its midst, the animated movie that stands above them all from 2012 is Wreck-It Ralph. Diving headfirst into the land of video games, Wreck-It Ralph mixes nostalgia, humor, and rockin' visuals to create a smart and original movie. No cheat codes needed to enjoy this one. I am bad, and that's good. I will never be good, and if that's not bad, there's no one I'd rather be than me. 2013, Frozen. We were big fans of Raj's girlfriend Claire on The Big Bang Theory, but when it comes to Disney's Frozen, we're Team Raj all the way. Which is probably why the movie sucks. <laughs> Here we are talking about Frozen, and yet you got burned. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry, but how can you not like that movie? I just think it gets more credit than it deserves. Picking up where Tangled left off, Frozen proved that fairy tales are here to stay in Disney's modern CG era. The film came complete with some great songs, particularly Let It Go. Let it go, let it go, when I'll rise like the break of dawn. Let it go, let it go, that perfect girl is gone. To say the film was a hit would be a massive understatement. Frozen didn't just take home the Oscar for Best Animated Feature, it also took home more box office money than any other film released that year. It also stood atop as the highest grossing animated movie ever, until The Lion King remake in 2019. 2014, The Lego Movie. While some might not have had high hopes for an animated movie based on a line of colorful interlocking plastic brick toys, it's safe to say that The Lego Movie surpassed all expectations. 
In fact, we would go so far as to say that everything about the Lego movie is awesome. Everything is awesome. The animation's awesome, the story is awesome, and it's filled with awesome jokes. But the LEGO Movie wasn't the only animated gem in 2014. How to Train Your Dragon 2 won the Annie Award for Best Animated Feature. You never cease to amaze me, bud. Thank you. <laughs> Toothless, you know that doesn't wash out! Another standout that year was the winner of the European Film Award for Best Animated Feature Film, Song of the Sea. 2015, Inside Out. Inside Out really gets into the mind of the protagonist, and we mean that literally. Joy, yes Joy, you'll be in charge of the console, keeping Riley happy all day long. And may I add, I love your dress, it's adorable. Oh, this old thing, thank you so much. I love the way it twirls. Pixar's amazing creation follows the emotional inner workings of Riley as she adjusts to her new life in San Francisco after her father's new job uproots the family from Minnesota. Inside Out explores the feelings of joy, sadness, fear, disgust, and anger in a way that's both smart and relatable to the young and old. Before we leave 2015, did you know that the guy who wrote Being John Malkovich and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind wrote and directed a stop-motion animated film? Charlie Kaufman's Anomalisa is a thought-provoking film about a man to whom everyone looks the same, except one girl. Yes. Yes. Finally. Finally, I've found you. I've waited so long for someone to... And you're so smart. 2016, Moana. If you were hoping that Moana would top our list for 2016, well, you're welcome. While The Rock's awesome demigod rap would almost be reason enough to rank this one at number one, the film is more than just great music. Honestly, I could go on and on. I could explain every natural phenomenon. The tide, the grass, the ground. Oh, that was mad. We just messing around. I killed a meal. I buried its guts. Sprouted a tree. Now you got coconuts. It's also a story of family, ancestry, empowerment, and a celebration of the Polynesian culture that is rarely seen on screen. However, while Moana was the shiny pinnacle of 2016, there are a couple of other films from that year that deserve a name drop. First, we have the stop-motion samurai adventure Kubo and the Two Strings. Then there's the Oscar winner from that year, Disney's take on the buddy cop genre, Zootopia. Change starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with all of us. 2017, Coco. If we're talking animated movies of 2017, we would be remiss not to at least mention The Breadwinner, which takes a hard and honest look at life for women and girls in Taliban-ruled Afghanistan. She should cover herself properly. Maybe you should stop looking at her. What did you say to me? I said, stop looking at her. I can have you killed! Idris. You watch what you say! The film is well-deserving of all the praise it received, as well as the Oscar nomination bestowed upon it. However, topping our list for 2017 would be the film that took home the Oscar that year, Coco. Mexico's Day of the Dead holiday has limitless potential for an animated movie. The good folks at Pixar realize this, delivering a beautiful and emotionally powerful film that explores some of life's biggest questions. Twenty eighteen, Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Twenty eighteen was a big year for superheroes and diversity. In live action, Black Panther was the first film in the MCU featuring a primarily black cast. What's up? I never yielded, and as you can see, I am not dead. In the animation space, we got a web slinger of color in Spider Man into the Spider Verse. But as important as both those films were to the promotion of diversity, if they didn't have compelling stories, they probably wouldn't have made much of an impact. So thankfully they did. Spider-Man was a huge box office triumph and was just as successful critically, receiving countless amounts of praise for its artistic and emotional storytelling. Anyone can wear the mask. You could wear the mask. If you didn't know that before, I hope you do now. 
It also became the first non-Pixar or Disney film to win a Best Animated Feature Oscar in over a decade, when Disney or Pixar were also among the nominees. 2019 – Klaus 2019 was a great year for animated movies at Netflix. In a crowded space, the streamer put out not one, but two films that the Academy liked enough to bestow a Best Animated Feature nomination. And we couldn't agree more. First, we have Klaus, because who doesn't love a good origin story these days? Every year, come the Christmas season, the letters started pouring in. More and more each time, and from farther away, we did have to expand the operation, just like we had planned. More children, more toys. But rather than take on standard superheroes, Klaus gives us an alternate take on the beginnings of the bringer of gifts himself, Santa Claus. Netflix also provided a platform for I Lost My Body, a French acquisition about a severed hand traveling across Paris to reattach itself. It was the first animated movie to win the Critics Week Award at the Cannes Film Festival. 2020 – Wolf Walkers Pixar released two great movies in 2020, the urban fantasy Onward and the beautifully crafted musical dramedy Soul. Both films would go on to earn Oscar nominations, with the latter taking home the statue for Best Animated Feature. Thank you. For what? We're in the business of inspiration, Joe, but it's not often we find ourselves inspired. Huh. Really? So we all decided to give you another chance. However, that being said, it was fellow nominee Wolfwalkers that stands out as the best animated movie of 2020. The film was the third in what has become known as the Irish Folklore Trilogy, which includes two previous Oscar nominees, The Secret of Kells and Song of the Sea. The primarily hand-drawn Wolfwalkers provides viewers with what Slate called, quote, stunning artwork for the ages. And with a 99% on Rotten Tomatoes, we obviously aren't the only ones who love this movie. Run free, run free. 2021, Encanto. Magic, music, and family all come together wonderfully in Disney's hit Encanto. With an impressive cast of voices and original music by the great Lin-Manuel Miranda, Encanto took the animated world by storm in 2021. The film grossed over $250 million at the box office and became an even bigger success story when it hit the Disney Plus streaming service at the end of the year. The film would also eventually go on to win Best Animated Feature at the Oscars, beating out The Mitchells vs. The Machines, another one of 2021's Best Animated Products. And we can't move on without also giving a shout out to the little shell himself, Marcel the Shell with shoes on. But sometimes you just have to disregard those rules and think, well, actually the rule is that I want to be having a good life and stay alive and, and not just survive, but have a good life. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 2022 – Turning Red It's a little disappointing that it took until 2022 for Pixar to release its first ever film solely directed by a woman, but at least it finally happened and it was a great movie. Directed by Chinese-Canadian animator Domi Shi, Turning Red is the story of 13-year-old Meilin Mei Li, a girl whose ancestry has cursed her with turning into a red panda when experiencing strong emotions. She was able to fend off bandits, protect her village, and save her family from ruin. Sun Yi passed this gift to her daughters for when they came of age. Set in Toronto, Canada in 2002, the film captures all the great details of the era, as well as the emotional bond and turmoil between a mother and a daughter. Things we can all relate to, even if we don't turn into giant pandas when we get angry. We love you, May. You're our girl. Yeah, no matter what. Panda or no panda. <sighs> Whoa. May. You're you! We also need to give a shout out to Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, which, despite treading familiar territory, also explored a child parent relationship with remarkable depth. Ha ha ha! Pinocchio! Oh, baby. Do you agree with our picks? 
check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.